Now we're set up to find a closed form for the number of rabbits and pairs that we have at month n that solves the Fibonacci linear recurrence. Well, let's remember that we derived the generating function for uh, the rabbit numbers, b sub n's, uh, as x over 1 minus x minus x squared. And we're going to use the method of partial fractions discussed in a previous video to extract the coefficients to find a cl nice closed form expression for bn, which will not only, which will not only be, uh, tell us some information about the behavior of bn, but it will also give us a much more efficient way to compute bn than simply repeatedly executing the recurrence. Okay. Uh, let's just remember our coefficient notations by way of review that when you write in uh, a brackets like this, x to the n, a generating function, you mean you're referring to the coefficient of x to the n in the series. So in that case, you were talking about the coefficient bn of x to the n. And let's just remember that we figured out that the coefficient of 1 over 1 minus x was 1. This was the generating function for the geometric series where all the coefficients were 1. So the nth coefficient uh, is 1. And in fact, we also figured out that if I replace x by alpha x, that has the effect of turning the coefficient of x to the n into alpha to the n. So these are facts that we uh, are going to make use of. It's a crucial part of the partial fraction method, which is why we reviewed it. Okay, um, let's proceed to find a closed form for the coefficient of x to the n and b of x given this b of x. And according to the method of partial fractions, the first thing we do is factor the denominator. Um, so I'm going to factor the denominator into uh, factors of the form 1 minus alpha x times 1 minus beta x. I can do this because the constant here is 1. Otherwise, I might have to have a constant in front to get terms of the form 1 minus um, a constant x. Uh, but anyway, here I can certainly factor the denominator as 1 minus alpha x over 1 minus beta x. And the question is then, what are alpha and beta? Well, they're easy enough to find from the quadratic formula. This is, after all, uh, a quadratic. And uh, it, you, if you look at it, you realize that alpha and beta will be the reciprocals of the roots. So that's where I can get them. And if I do that, uh, there's the formula for alpha. Um, this is the golden ratio, if you, uh, which you may know the story of. But in any case, that's what the quadratic formula gives you. Alpha is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Beta is 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. Okay, well now I know alpha and beta. I'm going to keep calling them alpha and beta because they're messy things to write down, but remember that they're known. That's why they're in green. And what partial fractions tells us is that b of x can be written as a constant over the factors of the denominator, a sum of them. So it's going to be some unknown constant a over 1 minus alpha x plus another constant over 1 minus beta x. And the puzzle now is how do we find a and b? Well, before we do that, let's observe that what we immediately know from our um, uh, remark about what are the coefficients of 1 minus alpha x, well, the coefficients of, the, of 1 minus alpha x are alpha to the n. 1 over 1 minus alpha x is alpha to the n. Likewise, the coefficients of 1 over 1 minus beta x is beta to the n. Well, when I take this generating function, um, the coefficient of this part contributes the coefficient alpha to the n, and then I'm multiplying by a constant. So the coefficient of x to the n in this term is a times alpha to the n. Likewise, the coefficient of x to the n in this term is b times beta to the n. And of course, when I add the generating functions, the coefficient of x to the n in their sum is simply the sum of their coefficients. So in short, the coefficient of x to the n in b of x, I now know exactly the form that it's in. It's a times alpha to the n plus b times beta to the n, where alpha and beta are known, and I still have to figure out what a and b are. Well, it's easy enough to solve for a and b because um, the definition of a and b in the partial fraction expansion where they were the constants such that this equation held. Remember, this is uh, uh, the b of x in factored form, and we knew that it was equal to uh, a over one factor plus b over the other factor for an unknown constants a, a and b, but we know that there are constants. And since this equation holds, um, what I, it enables me to solve for a and b by judicious choice of picking x's to evaluate at, and then that makes everything a constant and I can solve for a and b. In fact, there's a, a, a good way to choose the constants that is suggested if we multiply both sides of this equation by the denominator on the right-hand side, 
what that does is it turns, it gets rid of the denominator on the right hand side and then turns a over 1 minus alpha x into a times 1 minus beta x and dually for the second term. So I now have this equation and this equation is supposed to hold for all x. Uh, and that's going to make it particularly easy to solve for a and b because the trick is if I let x be 1 over beta here, this term disappears and I immediately can read off the value of b. And if I let x be 1 over alpha here, this term zeroes and I can immediately read off the value of a. So that's all I need to do to find a and b. I'm going to skip the algebra. You can work that out on paper. But the punchline is the following really amazing formula that uh, the coefficient of x to the n in the generating function b of x, that is to say the number of rabbits you have at the end of n months is described exactly by this astonishing formula, which it's hard to believe that this is even an integer. It's like nth power of one plus a fifth root and a, a fifth uh, and, and a reciprocal of a fifth root of five. What is that? Well, that's the answer. And, and you can verify, you might want to do it for a few values of n, that this is always an integer. As a matter of fact, uh, an exercise in the text before any of this was understood is to verify this formula. It turns out it's by, by induction, all the creativity is in finding the formula. Once you have it, it is pretty easy to verify by induction using the recurrence. But now we understand where an amazing formula like this comes from. Um, well, let's look at it some more. Uh, and notice that this term is a little bigger than 1. It's 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. It actually comes out to be about 1.62. And this term, which is 1 minus the root of 5, um, is a negative term. And the consequence is, it's, sorry, it's not uh, negative. It's less than 1 in absolute value. It's minus uh, uh, 0.62, but I don't care about the minus so much as since it's less than 1, if I keep raising it to higher and higher powers, it's going to go to 0. So the right-hand term here is going to 0 as n goes to infinity. And this is the term that dominates. And we can therefore say that um, the nth coefficient is asymptotically equal to the first of those two terms in the sum. Namely, it's asymptotically equal to 1 over the square root of 5 times the golden ratio to the nth power, and which turns out to be about uh, 0.45 times 162 to the nth power. And it's showing clearly that, that the rabbits are growing exponentially um, in uh, asymptotic uh, at an asymptotic rate of asymptotic equality. That approximation is there just because I truncated the numbers. Uh, 1 over the square root of 5 is not equal to uh, 0.45. It's an infinite decimal. But, and that's why I couldn't keep the equality or approximation or, or, or asymptotic equality symbol there. I just use approximate. Okay? But in fact, I can even uh, get a cooler statement than this. coefficient of b of x is going to be an integer. And that means that this number, which it's asymptotically equal to, it turns out that because uh, of the size of, of 1 plus root, uh, root 5 over 2, um, it's sufficient to just compute that term and round it to the nearest integer. So these square brackets now have a special meaning. They're neither ceiling nor floor, but they're round to the nearest integer. And this is an exact equality. All you need to do to compute the number of rabbits at month n is raise the golden ratio 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the nth power, which remember, we can do very quickly and with only about log of n squarings, uh, and multiply by 1 over the square root of 5 and round to the nearest integer, and we win.